Peace be to you all. Salaam alaikum. Omar here. Oh, physician associate, health educator, and middle age endurance runner. So, I'm going to talk to you guys about um, burnout and loss of motivation. Um, because some of you all may be going through this. Um, I, I, so some of you guys may know I'm training for my first ultra marathon, the uh, JFK 50 miler in November. And Lord willing, inshallah, I'll be 54. Uh, still blows my mind. Sorry. But um, I just, I have not felt like training at all. Like, period. Um, I've never had, I don't think I've ever been, hey, how are you? I don't think I've ever felt such a lack of motivation <laughs> to run or do anything physical, not even lift weights, um, in years. And I was trying to figure out why, because I would think that after Ramadan, you know, I fasted for 30 days from uh, pre-dawn to sunset from Ramadan. Now I think I'd be like invigorated spiritually and mentally and physically, but doggone it, I'm just like, I don't want to do anything. Right now I'm running at a 20 minute mile pace, so it's not even a run, <laughs> it's a shuffle. But I'm out here, um, I think I burned myself out because I trained really hard in, uh, in the winter. You know, here in Washington DC it doesn't get extremely cold. Um, it's not like below zero or anything. It might be in the teens, if you saw some of my videos. But it, typically it's in the 30s. Um, so you could just put on an extra layer of clothes or something and still get a, a reasonably comfortable run and run fairly far. But I, I did a lot of that. I just, I just feel, I still feel, I think now, hey guys, I think because, uh, maybe because uh, it's it's hotter now, I think it's, uh, it's close to 80s, but I'm in the woods. I think the hard running that I did during the winter um, has really burned me out, maybe. Um, and then we just got a lot of bad news and, you know, starting with the COVID pandemic, it's been two years, you know, and it's affected my job, you know, I'm a, as a PA, I've saw people die and going back and forth with the vaccines and the mandates and you know should I get vaccinated should I not do I have to wear a mask watching my colleagues die I lost a couple of friends um because of COVID and then you know on the other side are you being scoffed at because you're a sheeple because <laughs> you're you're doing all the mandates but then your your job and your career your livelihood depends on you being licensed and you're threatened by the government um the government's supposed to represent you that if you don't get this done then uh you know we're taking away your license you're not going to get your license renewed or you're going to be kicked out of your job that leads to burnout so we've been doing it for two daggone years and it doesn't seem like there's going to be an end in sight booster vaccines double boosters um so it's really, it's, I tried to be positive, but it's worn on me. Then the, all these mass shootings, you know, my wife lost a family member to the mass shooting that was in California you know, a few mo uh, months ago. Hey, um, so that hit close to home. There was another mass shooting. I, how are you? I think it was in Buffalo, if I'm not, somewhere. Uh, 10 people were killed. And that's another thing. It's, there's so many mass shootings now. Yeah, it, it, for, I lose track of them, you know. Uh, <laughs> then I lost my job and got a new one that doesn't pay as much, but it's kind of like, eh. <laughs> so, then personal family health issues. But all of these things kind of led to, hey, led to kind of just part of me feeling like, ah, forget it, man. Why bother? All that happy motivational stuff I <laughs> I talk about. What a load of crap! But I came back out. You know, for the past few days I've been jogging or shuffling, <laughs> uh, just trying to get it back. And um, 
it, it seems to, you know, not be back, but I'm still up here. I don't even know if I'm going to do this marathon anymore, but I paid for it. It's $200, non-refundable. <laughs> but, um, uh, for me, I just try to go back and re-examine what may have contributed to my lack of motivation now and and the possible burnout that I've been feeling because I worked really really hard as a hospitalist for about seven years um, that I saw a lot of people die I was on the receiving end of a lot of uh, angst <laughs> and ire from family members why did you let my loved one die and it's like they came to us with multiple morbidities and they were over 70. What do you want to do? But that can lead to burnout. So maybe it's a blessing that I'm in a new job. But, you know, when you guys, this is a cautionary tale for you guys. When you start to feel that kind of like, blah, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. See if you can find something else. Hey, or just kind of go away. Or, you know, people, rich folks have meditation retreats <laughs> they go out to beautiful places yeah i got the local park listen to that look at it um but hopefully that's helpful to you hey because we live in a tumultuous world um and most of us i would say many of us work very hard with with an increasing amount of decreasing um, rewards, you know, uh, materialistically speaking. So you work 40 hours and try to moonlight somewhere, and then sometimes that's not even enough. Uh, so this overworking that we do in, in the U.S., many of us, it, it, leads to, it can lead to burnout. I just lack of motivation for doing anything, anything that's going to be of value to you. So just kind of try to avoid that if you can. And when it happens, you know, um, just give yourself a, a small retreat. Like this is my retreat, you know, sit in a corner, you know, I um, go in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and cry and scream it through a pillow or something to try to get yourself get yourself back I, I, I work with a lot of people that they come in for aches and pains but it, it turns out that they have it turns out that they have uh, a lot of depression because of toxic people around them and toxic environments you know so yeah, they're smoking marijuana and drinking. They want me to write prescriptions for all this stuff. And I tell them, listen, do you want a prescription? Or do you want your problem? Do you want to be able to better cope with your problem or your challenge that's causing you distress? And then when they usually say, affirm to that, I say, yes, I want the situation to go away. I want this toxic, I want to be out of this toxic relationship with this environment. I said, well, listen, I can't do anything about it, but try looking at it from this perspective. Um, try finding gratitude in your situation. That helps me. You know, my son, one of my sons graduated from college yesterday. I was very happy about that. Uh, my daughter just turned 20. Uh, one of my other sons is about to turn 22. God willing, my wife and I have been married in, for 27 years in June. Lord willing, inshallah. But um, I have a lot to be grateful for. So when I, th I think about those things, that helps me with this kind of, uh, this kind of blah funk that, I, that I've been filling in. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. Anyway, I got to go up this incredibly steep hill. So I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. Subscribe if you want. Take care. Peace. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> Oh, hello. Look at this hill. Oh.
Ah, vem, vem, vem aqui. Vem aqui, vem. Alright guys, take care.